Well, during uh, Prohibition, uh, there's certainly some of the worst drinks ever made uh, in the history of cocktails. <laughs> and one of the reasons why is because of, uh, obviously, uh, alcohol was harder to get your hands on, especially later in Prohibition. But some of the drinks morphed from uh, being popular drinks before Prohibition into temperance drinks during Prohibition. And one of the most interesting ones to me is the uh, Gin Ricky. Um, and it was a very simple drink. You basically would start out with a, um, with a lime, cut the lime in half, squeeze the juice from the lime directly into the glass. And the, the interesting thing is a lot of people nowadays would discard the peel, but they actually added the peel to the drink because that adds a little depth, uh, that zestiness, um, and it even makes it a little tartar. So the next thing they would do is they would take uh, gin, uh, and obviously during Prohibition, they kind of, you know, would grab whatever gin they had available, but Old Tom was popular right before the time, and there was still some available, I'm sure. Uh, and they would pour about two ounces. And then the next part is to add uh, lump ice, which is what they generally had at the time. We use Apollinaris water, which was popular in DC. Uh, it's got a little more mineral content to it than your uh, average soda gun water or something uh, that's a little more neutral. So you have to make sure to kind of stir it in a little bit so that you get the mix of the soda water, the lime, and the gin, all of which are just have uh, a great, uh, is a great combination. And then you have air conditioning in a glass. So obviously during Prohibition, one of the, uh, one of the most popular drinks was actually a highball. And a highball can be any mixture of a spirit and, uh, and a mixer itself. So uh, to start it out, you have to cut the peel of a lemon. And much like you would skin an apple, you just have to cut the peel all around. And this is all something that you can build in the glass. So the next thing you're going to do is add ice in. And I'm using this wonderful block ice that I've cut myself to make sure that it dilutes a little slower. And then you're going to put in about two or one and a half ounces, one and a half to two ounces of bourbon. And I'm also using a bourbon that's a little higher proof because prior to prohibition, the bourbons tended to be uh, higher proof than they are today. Then we take a uh, ginger ale, and this one again is a spicy ginger ale, and I'm going to add a good amount of it. And then instead of stirring it, we don't want to agitate it too much. We're just going to kind of mix it in there. And lastly, just one dash of Angostura bitters. If you make the temperance version of this, you leave out the bourbon, obviously, and that is going to be an, uh, caught a horse's neck. As soon as you put the bourbon in, or scotch, or rye, or whatever you had available at the time, that's going to be the kick. So it's a horse's neck with a kick. So the Hong Kong is actually uh, known in some of the old uh, recipe books as a gin-based drink. But according to Henry William Thomas, who was one of DC's greatest bartenders, uh, he made his with scotch as the base. And then using a high quality vermouth, he used uh, three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth. and three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth. Now already this sounds like a drink that most people would think was a little boozy. But it actually comes off as pretty smooth and one of the uh, ingredients in it that helps with that is something called maraschino liqueur, which is made from the pits of marasca cherries. I'm gonna add just one spoonful because that's enough to really flavor the drink. And then lastly, we put in some cracked ice and a lot of early bartenders suggest using a generous portion of ice. And then this is a stirred drink. And we want to stir it enough to get the ingredients uh, mixed up, but we also want to add water to the drink because that's what also kind of makes it more potable uh, and delivers that kind of smooth flavor. And we'll stir it into the glass. And then I'm going to add just a little lemon peel on top which was not part of Henry William Thomas's original recipe, but I think makes a nice touch. And there you have it, the Hong Kong.
try it. It's delicious.